in the sight of God. Heavenly Father, Jehovah, let's help to this. We thank you for your word. Spirit of God, you are the great test teacher. Interpret this word to us. Let us have understanding because the Bible says the entrance of the word of God gives light and the given understanding to the simple. Lord, as we hear your word today, let that light of wisdom come unto our lives. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father, our God. Thank you for who you are. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. In clap of faith to Jesus. As you have your Praise the Lord. So according to this passage, by the grace of God, my teaching today, I titled it, Let Me Examine Your Books. Let Me Examine Your Books. Praise the Lord. Let Me Examine Your Books. So what does it really mean to examine your books? It's talking about accountability. To examine your books. According to this parable of Jesus Christ, verse 1 and 2 said, And he said unto his disciples, God gathered his disciples and began to talk to them in parable. He said, There was a certain man which had a steep wall. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. To, and he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this thing? Give an account of the sea worship, for thou mayest be no longer still war. Praise the Lord. The parable of the story is, there was a very rich man, industrialist, a man that owns company. He was a great farmer. And this man hired a manager. James Fashion called it Steve Wall. God's word and other versions call it manager. So this man hired a manager and he became the general manager of the company. And he trusted the business into this man's hand. And only this man had the financial book. You could remember last week my message. He has the key. Praise the Lord. If you were here last Sunday. So this general manager has the key. Like a straight central bank. He has the key. So he's the one, the general manager. He oversees every transaction. And the day came, the master had a shocking information about this man. The man was siphoning the money of the company. The man was using the money of the company for his own dealings. So the, the man become very dishonest because the manager trusted the man. Most of my brothers from the East we understand what I'm saying. When you have a shop and you have boys working under you, sometimes you are not in the business. Sometimes you are at home or you travel. They are the one running up and now writing receipts. They issue receipts on behalf of you. So those are the ones that go into the market and know everything. So this man trusted the business to this manager. And the manager was handling every money that comes in, every money that goes out, both the loans. Praise the Lord. But this man became corrupt to the extent the people who is going out with the man, the way the man is living, they came and told the master, this, your manager, the type of money he's spending, the way he's squandering this money, I know it's not his salary. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
We can see it in our society. Where your salary is just like in Nigeria, salary is about 50,000 naira, 100,000 naira is your salary. But the cars you use are 20 million. For this is a lot. Is it the salary that buy the car? And so have five cars. And the salary is about 60,000. So when people see you live such life, they know you are not living with your salary. So that's exactly what happened in this place. So when, I, when the friends or other neighbors found out that this man is not living according to his salary, they reported him to his master. Praise Master Jesus. So when his master heard it, the master called him quickly. And demanded for the financial book. That's why the title is, let me examine your books. So the master called him and said, come, bring all the financial books. Let me examine your books, your record. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. And when the master went through the books, he found out that those things Accusation was true. He found out that the man was it really spending the money without his knowledge. And he said, You are no longer worthy to walk with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We pray that when our master will come, that when he check our book, examine our book. Because every of our dealing every day is being recorded by the angels. The day we come, the book will be open. The Lord will demand to examine our books. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 3. Then the steward with himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the still worship. I cannot dig. To beg. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, the master told me, you will no longer work with me. Gather all my facts, maybe for one day or two days. Gather everything and give me a unit to live. So, by now, he dawned on the manager. He said, I have no strength to dig. Because they are into agriculture. He does not have the power to go and do farm, but he was spending the money as if he can work. There are many people that they don't have strength to do hard job, but they have strength to use Byron to steal money. Praise the Lord. It's an expert to use his Byron as an accountant where he's supposed to be 10. He can put double, 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 zero. Figure change. But now the master told him, you are fired. That's where the man now remember that, ha, now that I have lost the job, what can I do again? I don't have strength to work. It was hard work. But he was eating the money from hard work. He said, give, he said no, I don't have strength to work. And another one again, I am ashamed to beg. A man in such position, you know when you are when you are spending money that does, it does not work, does not belong to you, you spend it anyhow. So how, what shame can he use to go and meet people and say, please, help me for food. And remember in those days, it's not like today in the Western world, when you work, there is a benefit when you lose your job. There was nothing like benefit. There's nothing like passion. So when you just lose your job, you have lost your job, unless you have another one. So this man said, I don't have strength to do this type of job. And maybe his age, his, his age was not stated in this place. Maybe the man has looked his age and know that he cannot be able to do hard work anymore. And he said with his age and his influence, he could not be able to bear again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Yeah. So what the man did, 
He said, okay, I know what to do. After he has spoken or meditated on himself, reason, he said, well, I know what to do. So he has another plan. Praise Master Jesus. So the man now has another plan. It's okay. Within these few days, I will leave the company. I will do something to make sure I defraud the man the last opportunity. A thief is always a thief. Praise the Lord. That is the reason when you catch a thief and a, in a prison a thief, after coming out from the prison, he will thief another one. And you will take him again and put another prison once. As long as he didn't die, when he come out again, he will go back again. Praise the Lord. So whatever thing you are doing and you know that thing is a risk to go to prison, when you God give you the mercy and grace to succeed it, find another thing to do. Praise the Lord. Because God has shown you mercy, love you, and he, will, he wants you to do something else. Don't continue something you know is risk. Praise the Lord. You pray to God and say, God, give me wisdom. Open the way, open my eye. Give me what to do. You will see how God will bless you. Don't do what when you sleep, you, you will be afraid. When phone call come, you will be afraid to pick it. Many of you, you are afraid to pick phone calls. When you see a number, you don't know. When you pick it, you keep quiet. Let the person talk first. Praise the Lord. I don't fear any call. I know the type of life I live. I will pick it and you talk. Most of you, sometimes I call you, maybe you don't have my number or I use another number. You wait for some time, let the person talk. By right, you that pick supposed to talk, not who call you. So when you are behaving like that, the person will know there is a life you are living. You are living a life of fear. Because you that pick, Supposed to say hello, not who that called you. Praise the Lord. So it shows there is something fishing somewhere. So this man resolved and said, Let me use this few opportunity to defraud this man the last opportunity. Praise the Lord. Let's see verse 4. He said, I am resolved to do that. When I am put out of still worship, then May receive me into their houses. Fine. So he called every one of the lost debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much oil thou unto the Lord? Cease. And he said, And hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty seven. Then said he to another, And how much oil thou? And he said, and hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, take that pea and write four score and write eighty. Praise the Lord. So the second, what he resolved to do, the, sec the second thing he wanted to do, the last opportunity, he said, want to see to defraud the master more. Don't give any opportunity to any thief. The day you find out this person is a bad person, that minute, take action. Don't postpone. When you postpone it, you give opportunity to somebody to deal with you. They have dealt with you the first time, and don't give second opportunity. An evil person is an evil person. Upon what this man has done for years, to his master. When the master found out and gave him a few days just to make sure he gathered everything, he decided on his mind again. He didn't ask for forgiveness to defraud him the last time. Praise the Lord. You know what he did? He, he called all the debtors, those that are owing the master, because he's the one that knows them. The master only goes through the book. It's what he writes in the book, the master, we see. He went and called them and said, how much are you owing my master? 
The first one said hundred. He said, if it's hundred, bring your own receipt. Bring write it to fifty. He called the other one. He said it's hundred. He said, we write it to eighty. That is how we started giving them discounts. Begin to reduce the money they are owing the master without the master's consent. We are going somewhere to know the reason why he was doing it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. What he was trying to do for the debtors to see him as a very nice man. The debtors to see him as a man that is not wicked. He was using it indirectly to buy favor. Because he said, I cannot dig, neither I can beg. So what he's trying to do, to make sure he reduce those debts, and those people will see him as a good man, like how you say it, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. Praise the Lord. So that when the master finally sent him away, those ones can help him and do one thing or the other. But one thing is sure, those ones will not employ him because they know he's a thief. Praise the Lord. They know what he's doing is wrong. Most of you, when you buy things, you know a shop, how much they sell that goods. But his boys will come and meet you and tell you, you know how much we sell this, but we sell it this amount to you. They will reduce the price so much, and you will say you have gotten the deal. The master did not really know. It's the boy that you are buying it from him in a cheaper rate. And when police will come, police will hold you responsible. Sometimes they say you have you bought goose, a stolen goose. Because you know that ghost does not want that amount. And you know that 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 boy or that woman stole those things for his master. The master does not know what she or uh, he was doing. So that's exactly what this man was doing. Since he has not tried to walk and he has, he has uh, no uh, shame ashamed to bear. So he can do this favor to them. So that whenever it comes to them, they say, ah, good manager, they will give him something. So that is, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. So that was the last opportunity he said he's going to you to hit the master at the last time. Let's see verse 8. And the, and the master And the master commanded the unjust steward because he has done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Is it not shocking? The master also found out the new plans. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Yeah. That few days the man had to do all those things he had done. The master also found out. What are we trying to say? Everyone that is a senior in the business, he knows the secret more than you. He knows the secret more than you. That's why sometimes they will call you and ask you some question, we begin to lie. When we have already known the truth. And you think you are smart. So this thing is planned at the last minute. The master also found out. But there is another, another shocking news when we read. The Bible said the master commanded him. That's it. The master praised him. Are you not? Yeah, but what you have done, you always wise. Are you not just begin to confuse? Yeah. Upon what he have done to this master. The master, the Bible said the master commanded, the master praised him. It's, it's very shocking. But we're going to know why. He said his master praised him.
praise him. He praised his dishonest manager for his cleverness and intelligence, but not dishonesty. Praise the Lord. The master praised him for the cleverness, the intelligence. In a few days that he wanted to go out, he was able to find out or create such such plan. So the master prays in being clever and very intelligent to so secure his future, but not his unfaithfulness. The master did not praise him for his faithfulness or dishonesty. Praise the Lord. That's why sometimes you will see the tele, uh, the security agent. Sometimes they will, most of the people they use are criminals. They use criminals to get a criminal. Praise God, like Jesus. So when we see your intelligence, they know how to come to you. They know how to do it. They know how to use you to find out other because it's only intelligent man can also be able to find out intelligent things people are doing. But in our place, they don't do it. They should do it. Praise the Lord. The information is dead. Praise Master Jesus. So, he said, we they just use them as an informant. So, the master praised him. I said, ha! Within these few days, you have planned such again. But the master did not praise his unfaithfulness because he is a crook. Praise the Lord. So, he praised him because of that thing he has planned, very urgent. Praise the Lord. So what that man did is to secure his future. So that when they sack him, he can easily walk to that people and say, I need help from you. And because of what he has done for them to reduce their death, these people can easily give him and help. So what he did to secure his future. That's why the Bible say that, that the people of this world are more wiser than the children of light. Unbelievers know how to secure their future. They do good to their people. Unbelievers like them. So that tomorrow when they fall, they can also go back to them. But the Bible is telling us that the Christians are not wise. What Christians do, they do evil to their Christian brothers and sisters. Instead of doing good to them, because you don't know how tomorrow will be. Praise the Lord. So that is the reason the master praised him. Not because of he defrauded him, but he's intelligent to secure his future. But you will find it very difficult for Christian children of God, the children of light, to live a life to secure their future. Every little under misunderstanding, they begin to keep malice in the same church. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. So that is the reason I always tell you, or tell Christians, to make more friends than enemies. Unbelievers make more friends than enemies. But Christians make more enemies than friends. Don't you see those who smoke? You will just go out as he's going out. You see somebody smoking. He will ask you cigarettes. You will see. You will just bring one and give the person. Have you, have you not seen? Yes, he did not know him or her before. Yes. Don't please. I don't need cigarettes. You don't put her. If he does not hold matches, you see the other one running and bring lighter. Have you not noticed it? Yes, sir. Yes. Any opportunity you see those, use it to learn something. I have seen that, sir. They make friends easily. But Christians, even if he holds something you want to bear, he says, I know don't get that done. <laughs> then I say, you call me yesterday. <laughs> Ah, just now, now I'm just coming from there. I didn't mean you called me one, just one hour before it. And it's lying. And before both of you will talk to Jesus, we will go Genesis to Revelation. 
<laughs> he will use scripture to intimidate you. Because you don't quote like that, you say, ah, this world is just book. It's more than Bishop book. There are people that cram scriptures. And those that cram scripture does not work according to the word. I have told you many times, don't allow people that cram scriptures to intimidate you. When it's, when it's good to say it, but it's better you know the word of God. The word of God, when you eat it, you don't cram it. The word, the word of God, you walk according to the word of God because you have eaten it. If you drink a, a sleeping tablet, let me sleep, you sleep. Yes, sir. But these people, they cram it to defraud you. But what they like that person is living, it does He lives opposite words, he cram and quotes to you. Don't be intimidated by those that cram. Watch the life they live. The Bible says, by their fruit, we shall know them. Praise Master Jesus. So this man, unbeliever, Ephraim, was able to secure his future. But we Christians, we find it very difficult. So that's why the Bible says that the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. It's not supposed to be so. You will see unbelievers will quarrel, they will, they will quarrel, they will settle. They will start into their, their problem again. The time we are living, and we Christians, when we stay, they say these people are unbelievers, but they, they settle quickly than you that say you are a Christian. They forgive easily than you as a Christian. And when you see them, you condemn them. You see them, many of them are not against, if not like, don't wear a ring, cover your hair, that is the way you want it. But most people I see, they cover their hair, they wear the ring, you see them, those that they, most of them keep malice. But their physical look, you say these ones are the angels of God. Have one on one with them and you will see. So we Christians, that's why I always tell you, make more friends. More friends than enemies. It's very, very important. Build a friendly future today for yourself and your children. Most of you that keep malice, even to listen to children, Everything that happened in this place, I see that I not ask you. But my prayer that God will bring an event for you to know the evil you are doing. Because every day I warn people in this place. You that keep malice with a mother, with a father, also keep malice with a newborn baby. A day will come, maybe that baby is the, be the doctor that will look after you when you are old. No wonder sometimes they make mistakes and give people some bad injection. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us be careful. The life we live. Let's be careful. The life we live. I told you the other day that a man or a woman that has a child does not say never. Because your child can take you to the place you don't dream. To go. Where you say never in your life to go to bed, your child can destroy something that only only plea can solve. So let us be careful the things we do and what we see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's examine verse nine. And said unto him, unto you, make to yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness that when ye fail they may receive you into everlasting habitation what is he trying to say he said make lay your resources your time your talent you are money work for the kingdom lay your material wealth your intelligence take it to gain friends in the kingdom most of us, we invite people to the church that don't come because the life we live is very rough. 
we lie to people, and the same people we lie to, we, want, we are telling them to come to church. And the person will look at us and say, if really there is power of God in this ministry, in this church, this man or this woman would have left life. And they will tell you one thing or the other, you will not come. Our lives are supposed to preach the gospel. A scripture you know that you don't obey, don't quote it. It's an abomination. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What did I say? A scripture you know and you don't obey the scripture, don't quote it. It's an abomination. It's the same thing with devil. Devil knows the word. He quotes it. But he does not work with it. He trembles. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. So, use whatever thing that God has blessed you to win people into the kingdom. Proverbs 11 30. He said, It's the wise that win so. Fools cannot win so. It's wise people, intelligent people that want to win so. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's see verse 10 and 11. He said, If he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful in your righteousness, mammon, who will commit your trust through riches? What is he trying to tell us? Jesus called us to be faithful in little things. When you are faithful in little things, greater responsibility will be come to you. You do a deal, you transact a business with somebody, a little thing, be faithful. The person is using that one to try you, to know how faithful you are, how honest you are. And most people are starting to say this opportunity to hit this man. Or to hit this woman. And the bigger opportunity is coming where you will make it. And the person will know you are not faithful. Most of you, God has planned a bigger thing for you, but you have used your greed to destroy it. <coughs> and each time you say, God did not answer my prayer, who told you God has answered your prayer? Watch the life lead. That person that trusts you a little for a little thing and you come with unfaithfulness, the person, when the bigger one will come, the person will run away. When you see somebody who will want to transact business that will bless you, we tell you, that man, that woman is an evil. Even small business I did, I did with him or her, he ate everything. Don't do it. And when you want to pray, I see my, my brother's sister, they say, whoever that blocked what God has given me fire, I lie. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The water will enter the fire and don't move. Because you are the cause. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God knows that if you enter your hand, you will tie it. So when you are praying that prayer, don't waste your time. That's why God does not answer all prayers. Praise Master Jesus. So whoever that is faithful with little things, God will give opportunity for big things to be faithful. If you, if you cannot give somebody small money, you cannot give big money. Some people say, oh, I would have sold into the church, but I want God, I want to win the million first, so that when it becomes 50 billion, I can be able to go and pay my time. You are lying. When you come, the tides will very big in your eye. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a spirit of giving. When you learn that spirit of giving, you will never give. Giving is a sacrifice. Those that give that does not mean they don't have trouble, they don't have challenges, that they have it so much. It's sacrifice. If you cannot sacrifice little, you cannot sacrifice. So you that God have been blessing, you are waiting until you hit everything you are like. When you hit it, you will be big in your eye, you will not do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So until, if God cannot trust you with somebody, something in your hands, 
God cannot give you your own. I want you to understand. If no one can be able to trust something in your hand, don't expect your own to come. The trying is the somebody something to hold. When you could be able to hold it, God can give you a hope. God wants us to live a life of trust. Let's see verse 12 and 13. And if ye have not seen uh, been faithful in that which is another's man, who shall give you that which is yours? Uh, you are old. 13. No servant can serve two masters, for neither he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Praise the Lord. Yeah. In this world we live, God is important. Money is also important in our lives as Christians. The Bible told us that wisdom is a defense. And money is also a defense. Praise the Lord. Amen. But one thing in life is God first. Even without God, you cannot enjoy that money. Yes. That's why my 2C started to say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing will be added unto you. Seek the kingdom first. Seek God first and His righteousness. There is something I have found out, find out about Christians. Many people seek the kingdom of God, but that righteousness, they don't deal with it. That's why you can quote Genesis, Genesis to Revelation, but you will lack righteousness. You're not supposed to be so. Not only the kingdom, seek the righteousness, the dealing in the kingdom, and every other thing will be added unto you. So, God first, the kingdom of God with righteousness first, money will not follow you. And when money follows you, you can control the money. If money first before God, most people will die before their time. Because that money will be controlling you. Money is supposed to be a servant, not you to be a servant. That's why you can see people, because of the money they have, things they eat, you kill them. Some are homeless today. They have houses, they have properties today. They are homeless. Because the money controlled them. And they started eating and begin to be high. And higher. So when you are high, you, you live in the house. When you are higher, you live in a lakai. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because the house will be too small for you. Yes. When you are high, you live in the house. But when you are higher, you live in the street. Because the house will be too small for you. So you need open roof. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise Master Jesus. Let clap for the Holy Spirit. the world, the money, so that you can control it. Not money to control you. Money will not be the place of God. That's why the Bible says, as many that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. As many that are led, not by money, by the Spirit of God. So you can use that money to do this. I said last week that there's some people, some money will enter your hand, you will see this church very local. So brother or sister, let's go to church. You know that church is very local. And yet the money you not bring it to go and go to international as you want. Praise the Lord. That is the power of money. Money is good. But let the money God will give us, let us be able to control the money. No money to control us. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's see the verse 14 and the last verse 15. It said, And the Pharisees so also who were confessors had all these things and they dreaded him. 15. And he said unto them, Ye are, ye, ye, uh, ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed 
among men. It's an abomination in the sight of God. So the Pharisees were there when uh, Jesus Christ was making this parable, and they were all listening to him. So they become annoyed by Jesus Christ saying all these things. So when they heard Jesus, they frown because Jesus Christ know their secret dealings. What is their secret dealings that Jesus Christ talk in this parable? In those days, if you are a Jew, by Jewish law, a Jew could not loan money to his neighbor with interest. That was the time of law of Moses. Or it's a bank product. You want that they want to borrow it, you will bring exactly what you borrowed. So it's their law they cannot put interest in anything they give you. So what these Pharisees, what they do, they will go and a hire outsider, somebody who is not a Jew, a Gentile, or a foreigner. So we go and hire that person and give the person every authority, the books, everything. So whenever you want to loan, is that manager that will now come and make a deal. And the interest will be very high interest. The master will hide somewhere. You will not see the face of the master because he cannot come out. So that's what they do. And Jesus Christ, he knew their secret dealings. So that's why Jesus Christ was saying, and they were annoyed. He said, you justify yourself before people. How good you are. I call it eye service. At your back, you are killing the best. You push somebody forward and collect bigger interest. And you pretend you don't even know the dealings. We can do many things in hidden or in hiding. God knows everything. Sir. That's why the master said, let me examine your books. There is a record of everything we do in this life. Everything you do and no one knows about it. There is a record. Everyone is signed for one angel who keep our record. Everything you do and you think God is not seeing you, God is seeing you and there are angels assigned to write everything of your day. Praise the Lord. So there is angel of Bookkeeper, a book, a bookkeeper for you. So let's see the book of Hebrews 4 13. Hebrews, what is it? He said, Neither there is any creature that is not manifest in his side, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him who we have. Everything is naked, open before God. Nothing is hidden. We can hide it. We can hide our sin before men. But God knows what we are doing in the secret. Praise the Lord. So we should be very careful the life we live. How we treat others. With our money, our position, our influence, our connection our power because a day is coming the law will demand our books to examine it and when God will demand these books it will not be a general demand it will be individual demand so for you to submit your book you will submit individually because salvation is personal Praise the Lord. There was a time, I remember when I was telling the church, I said most of us does not really know how we manage to pay the rent of this place, to take care of the church. 
I told you that time, I said, make sure in that month, in four, you have maybe four Sundays or five Sundays, depends the month. Every offering, whatever thing you put in the church, write it on your own. Don't show it to anybody. Don't be sincere. Write it and hide it. Nobody will see it. End of the month, bring that to your book. Examine your book. And say, how much have I contributed? And also check how much you have spent for the same month. You will find you will be shocked that some people in one month, the offering they are putting in the church is two euro. Two euro. Yes. Some you might not even reach two euro. Maybe 10, 10, 20, 20 cents. And calculate it in the month and know how much you are saying yes. If you, if, you, if you want to give me time, let me begin to talk. Most of you that write, you really show me, but I can tell you what you write. If you want to give me the time, I will tell you. Because some people are laughing when I say two euros. Some people, some people, their record was less than two euros. Yes. I see that after Sunday, I see 25 euros. So calculate it. Yes. So what am I trying to say? Examine your book. Before the Lord asks for your own, examine so that you can amend it. Praise the Lord. There's someone very close to me. Say, examine your book first. Another person. Another person. Examine your book first. Another person. Examine your book first. Now tell yourself. Praise the Lord. Glad for Jesus. Yes. The life you live, sometimes if you want, if you want healing, not only you want pastor for deliverance, sit down in your house and take a book and say, This life I'm living, what is my gain? Says, I'll be living this type of life. Cross it, gain and lose. Not more than enough. The type of life you live, write it, gain and lose. And check it. What is my gain and what is my loss? You examine the book of your life. You can change it. Not only when pastor pray for you. Pastor can pray for you, but the temptation is in you. Yes. I'm not going with you. I have seen many people pray their fault, their fault. Tomorrow they come, their fault. They still live in the same house, but they see the fault every day. <laughs> the anointing is not in the fault. The deliverance is not in the fault. If not, if you fall today, next, tomorrow you're not supposed to fall. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So God has given you power and our grace to examine the life you live. And if you wake up and say, yes, this I will not do it, then you will see it. The grace is there. You know, sometimes we pray, Lord, give me grace to live the God. Give. Well, we don't pray because we don't love, but let me not tell you, that grace is within you. All you need to reactivate. The grace is within you. Reactivate it. The faith is sleeping. It's not like a bank account you have, you have used for long. They say that much. But when you go there and put more money, what happens? It becomes a lie. The grace is you. Tell somebody, the grace, you have it. Another person. Another person. Praise the Lord. Let's see the book of Romans. Romans 14. I will, I will Romans. Romans 14, 12. So, so then every one of us shall give of himself to God. Give account of himself to God. I read again. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. So before you present your account to God, you better go through your account first. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that you can change some certain things. When you do test, mark it and use red barrel and blue barrel. So when you see that the red barrel is so much, you have to read again. Praise the Lord. So before your master will mark it, you go through it and mark it by yourself and see your score and know how to improve about it. Praise the Lord. So account of our services unto mankind 
and God's kingdom. We are going to give account of our services as children of God to human beings. Those that we keep malice, we don't forgive, we are going to give account of them. Praise the Lord. Colossians 3. 23, 24. Colossians. 23, 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heart, heartedly as to the Lord and not unto men. 24. Knowing that the Lord ye shall receive the reward of evidence. For ye serve the Lord Christ. There is no good you do in this life that is a waste. This good will speak for you for one day. There is no good you do. And you say, oh, that good is a waste. No. A day will come, that good will locate you. If it doesn't locate you direct, it will locate you indirect. What does that mean? People, you are children, you are generation. And the people that come from you. I told you one day, one of my friends, they were doing business. And one of my town man, they met. And there was some amount he was charging for that business. Immediately they were talking, he asked the man where you come from. The man, the man mentioned my town. My friend shot. He said, are you sure you are from that town? He said, yes. He said, wait, let me confirm. They were in office, he called me. He said, please, I want to be sure the town you come from. I said, what happened? He said, no, just tell me. That man was there, a doctor from my place. And when he just, I, as I said it, the man shouted. The man said, ha! We started talking. And that doctor was a classmate of my senior ones. The same shots. Everything is settled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not from my family, just a town. He mentioned a town. And if he see evil, that town he mentioned, that business will end. So what am I trying to say? The good you are doing today or you have done before, don't say it's a waste. There is a day of reward. I pray God will reward you of your good. Amen. Anywhere you have been forgotten for good, you will see God this month of May of, of mercy. Amen. Your phone will read that correction with God. Whatever thing you think you have lost because of programming that have happened, I pray that this month a bigger contact will come for you. Amen. Receive it by the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. That contact you think, oh, because of my condition now, I have lost it. I see that contact coming. Yeah. I see somebody coming and testify. Yeah. I see somebody coming here and dance. Yeah. I see somebody coming here and begin to shout. God yeah. God. Yeah. I see that correction coming your way. Yeah. I see that food coming your way. Yeah. Oh, no wonder the Bible said that the, that the king was sleeping. That the, the king God took the the sleep of the king. He could not sleep. He said, bring that book of record. And when he saw it, he said, oh, this man with the kaya, he has done good for the, for the king. What has been, what good thing has been done unto him? They said nothing. He said, no. He said, God, I come and call him. Today, oh God, that man, that woman, that government, that has been delaying you, I pray tonight, I pray tonight, God will take you from them. God will take I pray that tonight I will remember you. I pray that tonight I will remember you. I pray that tonight I will remember you. Oh no, it's coming your way. Oh no, it's coming your way. Oh no, it's coming your way. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious God. Something is about to happen. I don't know who God has decided. Show mercy this morning. Something you never witnessed before. Ha! 
something you have never witnessed before. Something you have never imagined. Something is about to happen this month. I don't really know. Something you never imagined. Ha! Something, something, something. A notable miracle that no man, no woman will deny. God is about to do something in the life of someone. Amen. Today receive it. Amen. Today receive it. Amen. Today receive it. Amen. That breakthrough is coming in your way. Amen. That greatness is coming your way. Amen. That glory is coming your way. Amen. That testimony is coming your way. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father, our God. Thank you for who you are. In the name of Jesus. We want to pray. Father everlasting Jehovah with us. I pray, oh God, empower us to look into the book of our life. That whatever, oh God, that the angels will mark red, be deleted. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, in that aspect that make us to fail, in that aspect that make us to be ashamed, in that circumstance, they make us to not to talk when others are talking. That circumstance that make us to share secret tears. Today we call for that end of it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My Father, my God, we thank you. Amen. Jehovah Hashem for this, we thank you. Amen. I pray that so many local or maybe later that we will be watching in our social media. Father, I pray. There is no distance in the spirit. Yes, Wherever you are, receive that breath. Amen. Receive that breath. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Thank you for who you are. Let's say be your name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, Jesus.